belong, I belong to you. I think too, um, I think it's important that I shared this, um, being someone new um, to the team, is that, you know, team is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And what you just described is, um, you know, it's a, a funny quote, we don't get to choose our family, but that's why God gave us friends. Amen. <laughs> so um, Love it. when you start to really understand that there's choices of mm -hmm. the environment that you create, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, I always say we don't get to choose the environment that we were born from. I didn't get to choose my mom and dad, Bernard and Willa. They had me and the environment that they put me in obviously um, has helped in, in me being successful. But some people don't have that environment. And I right. think what you said is when you're dealing with, you know, within the house and family, um, have that conversation. It's an uncomfortable conversation, mm -hmm. but also lifting weights is uncomfortable and look at the result. Right. There, there's <laughs> things that there's things that come with work and sacrifice. And sometimes yeah. people don't want to do the work. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons that I chose to be a part of this team was as I got into my mid 40s, I started to realize that I wasn't as motivated to go to the gym. And I started to blow that whistle and say, you know what, it's not as important. Mm -hmm. It's harder, I'm getting older. But you know what I was doing? I was making excuses. Yeah. And so being a part uh, collectively of a team, Six Pack Abs has given me the understanding. And not only that, they've given me the understanding of science, motivation, education. When you tie all three of those together and you have a plan, mm -hmm. that's when you can start to execute that plan. Plan. Yeah. So important for, for being motivated. Um, taking things willy nilly yeah. <laughs> is, I mean, it can, can it be done? Yes. Um, but it's not, it's not ideal uh, for your ultimate success. Um, but yeah, the environment is, is, is truly everything. And, and I like that you explain that you can create your own environment yeah. because we're not all blessed with this perfect setting for success, you know? Um, and even if we were, even if we were born into that perfect setting, um, later down the road, things can, can get off track and we find ourselves in other really negative situations. And um, I think those are also things that we need to use as motivation. Like you said, your insecurities. I love that yeah. because that uh, resonates a lot with me. And I think for a lot of people, a lot of us um, are really good at hiding our insecurities. Um, but I think those can really fuel your fire for whatever goal it is you have. Yeah. I mean, fitness or not, those insecurities are the very things that I think we should look at and be like, I'm insecure about this. I have to do something to change it. Or I have to just accept that this is what it is. So um, that's another thing is like get rid of the, the jealousy and the envy of the people who have made the choice to right. go after these things. Because I think we see a lot of that, especially in, in the fitness world. A lot of people are like, you know, as, as a female, there's a lot of the, uh, the up and down looks. I'm not that type of person. I just... Right. I like kindness and being nice to people, but you get a lot of that in the fitness industry. And I've always kind of had this thought of like, if I see someone that looks phenomenal, that just makes my jaw drop, you know, someone that I could be jealous of, I want to go up to that person and be like, what are you doing? Please yeah. give me some advice because you know something clearly that I do not know. Yeah. And I want some of what you have. And, and that's another thing of people just needing to be bold and right. not be afraid to talk to people, right. strangers, your family, whoever. I think too, to add to what you said, because I think that's really important to one, find security in others mm -hmm. um, and see what makes them tick. But I would also add, why are you doing what you do? Right. Um, I think it's one thing to say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But I think the depth of a woman that might have dropped 100 pounds, she's just as motivating, or a guy that dropped 50 pounds yeah. as the hard fitness model. Um, and I think someone like yourself, who is a coach, who is a motivator, you see those things mm -hmm. happen. Um, I can, you know, I can feel comfortable saying, you know, I'm someone that d battles with depression. Um, I think there's always a lens that um, people perception um, if you were to go to any of my social media, you wouldn't know that. But mm -hmm. I talk about it. And I think that came through being vulnerable. 
And if you think about the word vulnerability, it's really being honest with yourself with others, right? A lot of people can't do that. Yeah. And I think the more that you do it, it's like doing a bench press or a squat, mm -hmm. the stronger you get, right? And if you continue to, to, to be vulnerable with yourself, with others, and that basically means these are the things that I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. Because I'm explaining something to you. Um, diamonds are made with pressure, right? And we all are diamonds. We just have to really understand that there's going to be some uncomfortable days yeah. and days that we don't want to do things that are important. And that's how you move forward. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, for me, someone who has been diagnosed with depression and really didn't feel comfortable talking about it because, um, you know, I don't look like I'm depressed, right? Right. We are physical. We have perceptions based off how people look. Mm -hmm. um, and people that don't know what depression is, it's it's hormonal. It's it's chemical. It has nothing to do with being sad or your boyfriend left you or right. your dog died. It's really something that fitness and wellness and working out has have helped me move forward in my life and it helps me feel better about myself. So yeah. there's so many things that we don't talk about right. within the culture of fitness and the culture of bodybuilding and the culture of health um, that I think you know, mental health is just as important because it does help us feel good about one self-respect. And then I'm doing this for me, right? Mm -hmm. You have to really start about why, why did you start the program? Why did you want to get a, a platinum coach? What are the, what are the things that motivated you to say, you know what, today's the day I'm going to start. And I think that's just as important as anything else. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and my personal background and I shared my story, a lot with clients and um, on other platforms as far as social media is concerned. But, you know, I went through a very abusive relationship for four years. And most people, if you go look at my Instagram, you're not going to see that. You're going to see, I don't know, maybe I need to share more of that there. But, um, you know, it. I think it does. You're right that we were so visual. Like we come yeah. across as vain fitness people we only care about how we look in our bikini but no at the end of the day what most of the viewers don't know is no i used fitness as a way to uh deal with the the uh anger the the hatred that i was holding in my heart um not towards just that other person but towards myself for yeah. allowing certain things and um you know, it it really does go deeper than than the skin yes. and the muscle and the bone. It's 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 a heart and soul thing. And I think back to so many workouts where I have worked out emotional, and some of those workouts have been quite literally the best workouts ever because there was so much intense emotion in what I was thinking about that particular day that it it pushed me. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to kind of touch on people's emotions being something that pushes them. You know, I can sit here and be going through a breakup and be really upset and I can get that pint of ice cream and I can Netflix and chill with my ice cream and cry for two months. Or I can be so upset and emotional and I can get outside and go run and clear my head. Mm -hmm. And so um, those two things are gonna provide some really different results yes. in how I deal with that breakup. Um, and I think a lot of people are not like, like you said, there's not many coaches or trainers that put all those puzzle pieces together. They're just kind of solely focused on, all right, let's get you in better shape. Yes. I think too, you know, I think it's one thing to be younger and be motivated because it's a, a, we're living in, um, a world of social media and perception. Yeah. Right? There's so many, mm -hmm. there's so much pressure on young girls and boys to look the part mm -hmm. um, or to look, to have the right clothes or to fit in, right? Um, and I think as you get older, um, and I'm speaking for myself, um, to your point about what you post, um, we're gonna post the things that we want people to see, mm -hmm. but I post the things that make me happy. You know, yeah. it's not personal, right? And I, if you can get something out of my post, and because I'm not going to show you my hair all messed up and, you know, crust in my eyes, right? We don't take <laughs> that photo. We don't take that photo, right? <laughs> um, no, we don't. <laughs> so I think when we no, start no. to think about wellness and fitness, um, it's something that's so much deeper than the physical part, yeah. right? And I think that's really what we're talking about. It's a mentality, mm -hmm. it's a mental state, and it's a mindset that's mindset. much deeper 
than having abs in what you look like. And when you start from that position, mm -hmm. the other things just fall in place, right? Because Absolutely. if you do it over a period of time, it becomes what? A lifestyle and a good habit. And consistency is key. Yes. And, and, and that brings me to another point. Um, you know, I said earlier that mindset is something that we can learn as a child from our parents. Um, or if we didn't have that, we have to learn it later in life. Okay, so how do I learn that later in life? How do I change my mindset? And some of the things that have worked for me is simple as sticky notes. Mm -hmm. Like, I am smart. I am beautiful. I am, you know, whatever things I thought I was lacking in, whatever areas I felt needed improvement in my life, I, I really had to work so hard on changing the thought patterns. And as soon as my thoughts went negative, I had to actively say, that was a negative thought, that is not welcome here, that needs to go, and I need to replace it with a new one. And I think that this is so important because I know for me it was a game changer in my life because I was very much, um, I was the girl who never felt good enough. I never thought I was pretty enough, smart enough, anything. I was just never enough. Mm -hmm. And my thoughts were exactly that. And so um, one of the things with our viewers is like, I really want to stress that to them. Like, mm -hmm. You can change it, but it does take work and it does take time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and you have to be actively seeking that, that mind shift. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, leave those in the comments box below and share this with your loved ones, you guys. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that you can be informed when we have a new workout or discussion for you.